How much time you spend editing your images and how efficient is your workflow? A strange habit many photographers have is that they like to spend a lot of time making simple things difficult. This apparently makes them feel more professional, competent, but it doesn't. I think it's just the opposite. Hi everyone, what's going on? I'm Andrea and welcome back to the channel. Today's video is brought to you by the awesome folks over at Capture One. And in this episode, uh, as many of you asked here on YouTube and Instagram, I'll show you my method for making your photo editing more efficient by going through the edit of this landscape image and try to inspire you by discovering some of my favorite powerful and very intuitive tools in Capture One. But before we get started, I just want to take a moment to thank you all for your comments, uh, messages, uh, your feedback is very important. I'm so grateful to you guys. As I looked at my editing workflow, it's getting easier and faster. I've been using Capture One for almost uh, 10 years uh, and I find myself using software like uh, Photoshop less and less. There is a sort of relief to be able to edit uh, an image from a raw stage to a finished image uh, without having to use uh, any other software. Let's get to how I set up uh, my workspace because I, I think that's uh, the key element to speeding up uh, the whole editing process. The whole benefit of Capture One is uh, really the customization and the customization tools are fantastic. They let you arrange uh, each individual tool panel to your liking and needs uh, and save you configuration as a custom workspace. It's very simple. You need to go to the top menu, window, workspace, save workspace and give the new custom workspace a name you like. For this video, I use the latest version 15.3. As you may notice, the tools panel has been redesigned to make uh, browsing the interface easier and more predictable. The graphics are the same as in the iPad version and there are two different layouts. The standard layout with new uh, large icons uh, and description, which I really like it. I think it's more intuitive now and less confusing to find the tools you need. And then there is the compact version with just the small icons. You can choose uh, your preferred version by clicking on these three dots uh, and selecting icons only. As you might notice, I moved the main toolbar to the right uh, and the browser to the left. It's pretty easy to reposition these models by selecting these three new dots uh, and clicking place right. But if you have been following me for a while, you probably know that I'm addicted to keyboard shortcuts. A handy keyboard shortcut to move the panel left or right is uh, Shift Command T and Command T to show and hide it. You can also use the two other handy keyboard shortcuts to move uh, and show and hide the browser panel, giving you an even cleaner workspace when editing. The first is a Shift Command B to move the browser down or left and Command B to show or hide it. You can also see I've completely customized the workspace and removed the models I don't use to optimize my editing speed. I'd like to briefly explain why I choose this configuration to give you more context. Capture One has a brilliant and unique feature that I use quite a lot, Speed Edit, which uh, lets you edit photos without having to navigate to the editing tools. It's a super convenient way to quickly edit your photos and it combines keyboard shortcuts with your mouse, uh, arrow keys, uh, Wacom tablet uh, or trackpad. So I decided to reconfigure the entire interface to take advantage of this uh, wonderful feature. If you want to see what you can do with Speed Edit, uh, just uh, go to Edit, Edit Keyboard Shortcuts uh, and Speed Edit. These are my settings. I made a few tweaks uh, to the default settings by adding a few extra keyboard shortcuts for the dehaze, uh, sharpening, uh, light fall off and structure. My workspace now looks much more minimalist with a custom toolbar called Andrea where I put only the models I use uh, most often. To create your own custom toolbar, you have to click on the three dots here, add tool tab, custom tool tab, add desired tab, name and icon and select add tab. From here, you can add the tools you want by right click on this empty space and add tool. In addition to the main toolbar, I've added another floating custom toolbar with just the layers and style brushes modules. Okay, now you may be wondering how to rearrange the various models. Nothing could be easier. Each tab in Capture One can be dragged and dropped to any location and in any order. To create a new floating tab, all you have to do is go to the top menu, window, create floating tool and select the tool you want or just right click on one of the models and choose add tool, as we have already seen. If you want to remove a tool, just click on the three dots of that tool and select remove tool. So the customization options are incredible. If you're like me and work with the two monitor, Capture One is super flexible. I love using the iMac as my main monitor and viewing the image in a smaller version by taking advantage of the proof margin tool. Uh, the shortcut key is D. Then if I select window, 
viewer from the top menu, I can see a much bigger version of the image uh, I'm working on on the second calibrated monitor at the same time, which is very, very handy. I know the workspace is quite personal uh, for sure, so feel free to customize it with uh, whatever tools makes the most sense for your workflow. The options are almost endless. Now let's move on to the image and I'll show you how to put the, these uh, workspace settings into practice uh, along with the speed edit controls. Here we have this mountain landscape I captured during one of my photography workshops in the Dolomites. For the entire editing process, except for uh, a couple of instances where I use the more advanced Luma range tool, I only use a few basic tools, uh, the speed edit uh, commands together with the uh, keyboard shortcuts uh, and the handy style brushes that I'll show you in a moment. Okay, on the left we have got the raw file straight out uh, from the camera and on the right is the edited version. To see the before and after, instead of using the dedicated tool here, uh, you can be quicker by using uh, the Y keyboard key or shift Y to switch between the full view and the split view. As you can see in this tab, I applied many different local adjustments. I always like uh, to work incrementally, so the layers tab is the perfect place to make uh, incremental adjustments uh, and split things like uh, color edits from exposure to multiple layers. The background layer is usually used for basic global adjustments, uh, while all local adjustments are managed on different layers. Okay, let's start editing this shot by making some global adjustments using speed edit. The raw image looks uh, a bit underexposed and lacks contrast. The first thing I do is change the curve setting from auto to film standard. I quite like the overall image look in terms of micro contrast and color separation now. Here on the screen I put the speed edit keyboard cheat sheet to see the settings I use. Now to activate speed edit I hold down the Q key and use the mouse wheel to increase or decrease the exposure value. I think overexposing by one stop looks great. Now let's increase the contrast by holding down the W key like so. Nice. Then I'm gonna uh, decrease the saturation a little bit by holding down the R key, like that. I like a slightly desaturated look for this shot. Now I'm gonna decrease both the temperature and tint by holding down the one key for the temperature and the two for the tint, there. Actually, I would increase the contrast between uh, these two areas a little bit more with the curve tool. So I'm gonna add uh, a couple of anchor points. I'm gonna decrease this one uh, just a hair. Let's increase uh, this other one. Great. And maybe I'll increase uh, the black points a little bit to soften the blacks. Just like that. A few more global adjustments. Uh, the light fall off. Uh, let's see if it's better with or without the natural vignetting. Again, speed edit custom button for this parameter is uh, 4. I found the natural vignette works perfectly in this shot, so I'll leave it at 0. Okay. Next step, this little bright spot on the edge is really bothering me, so I'm gonna use the healing tool with the S shortcut key. If you want to change the brush size, a handy shortcut is to hold down control option and move the mouse left and right. Whereas moving it up and down, you change the hardness. So I'm gonna click here and it's gone. H to switch back to the hand tool. Now I'm gonna rename the layers to stay organized, like that, nice. The overall contrast can be improved for them. To do this, uh, I will add a new field layer by choosing the plus icon, new field adjustment layer. Again, to speed things up, since creating layers uh, is a crucial part of my editing process, I created a new shortcut. In the edit menu, there is a separate section called edit keyboard shortcuts, where you can find all the keyboard shortcuts uh, for various actions. Let me show you how I customize an action. In the shortcut keys section, select layer, and here I apply different keyboard shortcuts. As you can see, I chose option F for a new field adjustment layer. The default set doesn't have these shortcuts, so I recommend you create uh, your own settings with the keyboard shortcuts uh, you feel more comfortable with by just clicking this plus button here. Now let's go back to the new layer. Here I want to apply some sort of dehaze to make everything more contrasting. I select the dehaze eyedropper tool and click in this shadow area. Again, speed edit a shortcut, I hold down the key 3 and use the mouse wheel to increase the dehaze level to about 30. There. With the eraser tool, keyboard shortcut E, I'll paint away some of the effect on the upper peaks to preserve the separation created by the natural atmosphere. M is the keyboard shortcut for showing and hiding the mask, which is very handy for seeing where you are brushing on. Option M lets you see the grayscale mask and gives you an even more precise reference uh, 
that's lovely. For the next adjustments, I made use of the handy style brushes, which are pre-configured sets of brushes. You will find them in the default workspace under the Adjust Tool tab, and there are three groups, Color, Enhancements, and Light and Contrast. By default, these brushes are set to have a very low flow, so each adjustment is done very gradually. So for each style brush, you always have a, a context menu with a right click where you can change the default settings. Now, what I want to do is apply a soft flare in this area to enhance the atmospheric light effect. So I'm going to choose a soft flare and I'm going to brush over this area here. Then I will apply a Luma Range Mask to filter out the shadows so that the effect is only applied to the midtones and highlights. Of course, this video is not about advanced features like the Luma Range tool. So if you are not familiar with it, I highly recommend checking out some of my previous videos of Capture One. Getting back to the brush styles, a little tip. If you want to apply multiple independent instances of the same brush style, say I want to add another soft flare layer here, you have to right click on the soft flare style brush and choose use on new layer. This will give you a separate soft flare layer that you can use independently in another area. This option works uh, for any brush style in the list, of course. Okay, I think you have the idea of how handy and easy to use the style brushes and speed edits are. So, to keep the video from getting too long, from now on I'll just describe the following adjustments I made to speed up the process. And if you have enjoyed the video so far, do me a big favor. Hit the subscribe button and turn the notification on for more videos like this. Thank you very much. Okay, with the dark foreground layer, I decreased the exposure of the foreground with a graduated filter to allow the viewer side to travel to the upper peaks before and after, much better. With dark sky layers, left and right, I applied the two graduated filters to make the sky darker and more dramatic and uh, to create a sort of natural vignetting. The next layer is about reducing only the highlights in the foreground. I felt they were too strong and quite distracting, so I used the brush tool with the auto mask enabled to create a, a more precise selection and I reduced the highlights and whites. This is the before and after. On the next two layers, to enhance the three-dimensionality of the image, I adopted the powerful dodge and burn technique and I used the, the convenient dodge and burn style brushes. Let's activate the mask so you can see the areas I painted to darken and brighten them up. This is the dodge layer, here is the before and after, and here is the burn layer, before and after. Sweet. Moving forward to the last few adjustments, I used the, the desaturated color gradient layer to change the color to make the image look cooler. I used both the RGB levels tool and the color balance tool to create this uh, bluish tone in the shadows and midtones. Uh, you can change the intensity of this toning layer with the opacity slider, which I love, it's super convenient. I warmed up the highlights by adding a warm tone with the color balance tool here, the before and after, before and after. A very subtle adjustment that uh, improves the final look. Then I applied a glow simulation effect by using my personal technique in Capture One combining in a specific way the haze and clarity tools. The effect targets only the high midtones and highlights. The second to last uh, layer, center light, is uh, all about emphasizing the light in the center of the image to make uh, the focal point even clearer. I basically brush this area and drag the white point to the left to increase brightness and contrast. On the final sunlight layer, I applied a radial filter to simulate sunlight. Uh, on the exposure tab, uh, I increased the exposure by a half stop, uh, the contrast uh, and brightness and drag the top black point to get uh, more haziness. Again, I turned down the opacity slider for a subtle and natural looking effect. Let's take a look at where we started. Here is the raw file with no adjustments and this is our final product. What do you think? We just use some basic and powerful tools in Capture One, that's a pretty big difference. But I want to give you an extra cool idea of how to streamline your editing process with the speed edit feature in Capture One. In this main area, you can not only display just a single image, but by selecting multiple images, uh, you have a multi-view mode that allows you to see all the selected images uh, side by side. The great thing is that this view has many interesting hidden features. For example, you can select a reference image that will then be displayed next to the image that you are editing. This way you can visually refer to the other image while making adjustments to the image you are editing. Moreover, if you capture a series of images in a relatively similar light conditions, you can also use these great features together with Speed Edit to edit all of them at once. You have to make sure this feature is enabled 
otherwise uh, the adjustments uh, will only be applied to the selected shot. For example, here we have uh, four shots from the same morning. Similar like conditions. Uh, now I'm going to activate the edit uh, selected function and by using the speed edit in combination with the multiple image view, we can literally edit all the shots much, much faster. Wonderful. I hope you learned something from this video to improve your efficiency in photo editing. Huge thank you to Capture One for sponsoring this video and supporting the channel. If you want to try Capture One, I put in the video description the link to download a completely free 30-day trial to find out for yourself just how powerful it is and maybe try out some different ways to approach your photography. And we are ready to buy. Use the code Andrea20 to get a 20% off from your new annual plan. For any questions, as always, please drop me a comment down below. If you haven't already, give the like button a downstroke and subscribe to the channel. In the meantime, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao!